So what do they call you? Uh, my AKA, well, I have two. Growing up, like the first name I ever got when I was like 13, my friends gave me a Buddha because I got drunk with my friends and uh, they shaved my head for the first time. And he said, he started, I put his dickies on, they were extra baggy. And he's like, you look like the Buddha. And I hated it, but most nicknames you you pick, you know, and, uh, I mean, you don't pick, they get given to you. And I didn't like it, of course. And, uh, but it just stuck with me. And I just been Buddha probably all my life. Most of my friends and my girlfriends and anything, most of everybody except my mom or my grandma calls me Buddha. But, uh, when I got to my gang, I became Bandit because my homies didn't want that name. They were like, we need a gang name. And I didn't understand it, but, uh, so Bandit or Buddha, but Buddha I go by. What are you incarcerated for, sir? And how long is your sentence? I'm incarcerated for a uh, second degree attempted murder with a, with a firearm enhancement, uh, and I got 34 years to life. Where are you from right here on the streets? I'm from uh, Hacienda Heights, California, in Los Angeles County. Do you or did you at any time for your life belong to any type of gangs, groups, organizations? From a gang called Barrio Trece with a V. It starts with, they didn't spell it with a B. It was V, V-A-R-R-I-O, Barrio Trece, and it was in Hacienda Heights. My grandparents, they, they, my grandma didn't like cholos. She hated that, that stuff. She, like, I had a good big family. Like, I was raised right. I was, you know, educated. Like, I made sure my grandma made sure I did all my homework and, you know, uh, Make sure I pronounced my words right. I didn't say slang. I didn't talk slang. It just I would do that when I left the house. You know, I'd pull my socks up, like you know, my white socks, all the way up my shorts. After I left the house, I would dress different. Once I left the house, but when I'm home, from my grandparents, I would act like I wasn't. So it was like two people. I was, you know, I was I was intrigued by the the street lifestyle, and you know, I started meeting people, and I was Buddha. People I met, I was, I was Buddha. So I had like I believed I had a reputation to make. So I started fighting, and I got from a crew when I was about what, 12, 13. I got from a crew, or 13, 14, after I got my name, I got from this crew, little tagging crew, and started meeting more gang members, more Mexicans, and I kicked out of my school. I went to a, then I got sent to a middle school in La Puente, and that's majority Mexicans. And then, then I got introduced to more gang member lifestyle and gangsters and, 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 and just more Mexican culture. And I guess Mexican culture is not just gang members, but where I was at, I more involved and more uh, or surrounded by them. And I liked it. I liked that, you know, the way they dressed, the way. I just, I was intrigued, and I wanted to be that, and I wanted to build a reputation. So I'd fight, and I, you know, like, I just started building a little rep for myself, and uh, you know, went back to Hacienda Heights and got back to my middle school, and, and people knew who I was. I was Buddha, you know, like my my age group. You know, we all knew each other because it's a small city. It's not that big, but um, then I got in high school, and by then I was already a tagging crew. And, like people knew who people like different. Everybody knew who everybody was. What crews were crews, and like who was who. And um, and uh, my, I got out of my crew because I started getting arrested for stealing. I broke into a house. I got caught. I broke into a house, stole the car, went in a high speed high speed pursuit. Like three days later, uh, got bit by the canine unit, and uh, you know I got arrested. And, uh, and there was a rumor I snitched, and so uh, as soon as I got out, I went to my all of my friends and my crew. I uh. uh I dropped the crew. I got jumped out. Cause I told them, I'm not no snitch. I'm here to clear my name. And I got jumped two times, and you know, I left the crew alone. And uh, uh, then I started just doing my own thing. I started, you know, like, I'm not going to be somebody. I never wanted a gangbang. I was nice. Like, I got along with everybody. The friend that I told you hit me in the head with a cast, he became, he got from a gang in La Puente called Puente uh, Rese. And uh, him and his brothers, they were from there. And I could have became, but I just, I didn't, I didn't, I just didn't want a gangbang. That wasn't me. I got along with everybody. I was just more the stoner who just, was friends with everybody, and I can go anywhere I wanted and without tripping on who's tripping on me. And uh, you know, I was intrigued by guns as a young age. Uh, like I just liked carrying guns. I wanted to be that badass, you know. I wanted to like, I wanted to, I wanted, to, I wanted to be somebody. I wanted to be feared. I wanted to be. Uh, I, just really wanted, I wanted to build a reputation, even though deep down inside, like you know, like, it was my friends. The one that hit me in the head with a cast. He brought the. Uh, I used to be a little scared kid, and I'd be scared of fighting, get scared of hit. Like I wouldn't want to fight. I'd be scared. And he, the, him and his brothers used to like, you know, they used to mess me up and try to bring the, bring, take that scariness out where I wouldn't be scared of fighting. Eventually it worked, and then I started fighting more. And um, so I wasn't scared to carry guns. I wasn't scared, you know. Started getting arrested for stealing. I started, my first time I ever got arrested was I was stealing from a, was a CVS, I was stealing candy, and got arrested for uh, 
man, I gotta take it. I kept like retail theft, and going to stores and stealing, and so that that was like petty theft. I was like my little, I like thieving. I got better at it, and then I started breaking into houses, and you know I regret that to this day. You know, like I, you know, I never did it with people in the house. Like I would do it when people were at home, and um, you know I think back now, and I like man, I, I know how much damage I've caused to those people's houses and homes, and you know their lives. You know I didn't think about it at the time, and um, but now that like I hate to say, it, but growing up, like I was on a crash course, I knew it. Like as a teenage going through teenage years, I wanted to just I was just doing whatever I could to just, just I didn't care. I was just you know rob people, like rob people, breaking houses and steal and you know jump like fight and I you know I, I ran I left I ran away from home at around fourteen fifteen. Even though I could stay home, I just I wanted to leave my house because I didn't I love my grandparents and I didn't want what I was doing to 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 happen to them. I didn't want collateral them to be collateral damage because of what I'm doing. I'm breaking into people's houses that people want to do it to me. They break into my grandparents' house. I I don't know what I would have done. And very few people knew where I lived. Only the people I kinda of trusted that I'd been to their house. And I remember my grandfather had asked me one time, he said, Uh, what are you ashamed of me? Like why don't you bring your friends over? And I couldn't tell him, you know, I kinda of choked up. I was like, Pop, you don't <laughs> I, I can't tell you. I just recently told him a couple of years ago, like I explained what I was doing. My like, father was breaking into those houses, and I didn't want you guys to get robbed. I didn't want this to happen. You don't deserve it, you know. Like what I'm doing, you shouldn't pay for. And so he kind of understood, but you know, he's still here. He still loves me. Thank God he's still alive. You know, he sees it. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Um, I, I, around, <clears throat> I guess, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Now about seventeen or eighteen, I started. I got involved with crystal meth, and that was, I think, <laughs> the turning port where everything just went. They just crashed, and everything just crashed and burned. Like my grandfather bought me a car, and I was driving, I was working, I was doing good. And when I started smoking crystal meth, my friend brought me one of my friends that I grew up with, the one that hit me in the head with the cast. His cousin introduced me. You have 60 seconds remaining. Well, I was uh, 16, 17, 18. I, I my grandparents bought me a car, and I was a uh, Shortly after that, one of my friends that I grew up with, uh, he introduced me to crystal meth. And I got mad at him the first time he, he offered it to me because I didn't know what it was. And I didn't, I looked down on it. I was like, no, I'm not doing no hard drugs. I smoke weed. I drink. I might do coke and actually once in a while. But I was like, that was crackhead shit. I did, I, that's what I felt. I just didn't, I didn't want to do I got mad at him. I'm like, bro, don't ever, like, don't ever do that. Please don't. Like, I got mad. I dropped him off. And he called me. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I trust you. You're my friend. He goes, I've been, I've been using again, and he goes, I felt comfortable to let you know, and I just, so I slept on it, and the next day we went, I picked him up, and we were going to go see his uh, brother's kids, come up, because his brother was locked up, so we're going to go, you know, hang out with his children, kids, and big mama, you know, just, you know, give the kids, you know, you know take them out of the park, and, but he popped it, he popped it out again, and I was intrigued already, so I tried it, and that was, oh, man, I wish I would have never tried it, because, I lost practically every everything just went it just went down the drain and not right away but eventually it just it just made everything worse because I I got introduced to a whole different world tweakers and and and, and yeah just, yeah but um yeah I started smoking and then I you know I started doing you know more crimes and I got I got you know my car taken and and it just didn't I started hanging out with a different because the crew I used to be from, I dropped that crew, and there was another crew called <laughs> Little Rascals, LRS, that became from the gang in my city, bought a precedent. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. In bought a precedent, Little Rascals clip. And, uh, you know, I had a friend. I don't want to mention his name because I don't want to put him out there because he's still doing his thing. I'm, I'm, I, I've hung my flag up, and I'm not doing that no more. And uh, he's still doing his thing, and I just, I love, I, I love for him. And, so I started kicking in with them and hanging out with them a lot. You know, I built like camaraderie. And they were my friends, or so I thought. You know, I had a, a clouded sense of loyalty because you know they they would show me love, and but not too much because I wasn't from the gang, and so they always wanted me to become one. And I just I, I wasn't. I know I didn't want to. A few times they'd ask me, and they were like, "Well, you know, one time I got kicked out of the house. We were having a really big house party at my friend's house, and he was from their gang. He was from the gang, and he's like, anybody from not from the gang has to leave." I was like the only one, so I kind of, I left, and, and then one night I just, you know, I said, fuck it, like, I'm, uh, I asked my, I see, same one that kicked me out, him and my other homie, I asked him, what's up, can you put me on, 
and we were at my older homie's house. And he's like, really, you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just, you know, let's do this. You know, and I was, I was 18, so I was late. But uh, I already built a reputation for myself, so, like, you know, I went out, and, the, and the, it was an apartment complex, went out by the dumpsters, and my older homie and my two homies my age, you know, uh, I got jumped in, you know, uh, 13 seconds, you know, they beat the brace out, and they beat the shit out of me, but, you know, like, the two of, like, you know, they didn't stop me out, they just, you know, get up, you know, ran it, and, and after I got all hugs from them, you know, come like, you know, we had a drink, and, you know, celebrated, and, uh, so I came from the gang, and I had to tell my friends that I grew up with, the one that hit me in the head with a cast, and, because they're from my, my enemy's gang, <laughs> and I told them, look, I love you guys, man, I just, I, you know, I felt like, you know, they grew up in Hacienda Heights, and I grew up in Hacienda Heights, but they became from a gang in another city because of, because of their sister's baby daddy who rest in peace. They had a different reason for joining the gang, but I didn't feel like I should join a gang that wasn't the city I grew up in. I grew up in Hacienda Heights, and the gang in that city is in Vada Presa. There's a click off La Puente, but I just, I was, I, I got from that gang, and I had a bunch of my friends, and so, you know, that was my little loyal, like, I felt, you know, like, I'm going to show my loyalty, I'm going to show my love, and when it was all clouded, I should have been, now I know I should have, you know, been worried about my family, thought, and been loyal to my family. Because when I, you know, now that I'm busted, and the only people there are my, are my family. But I, uh, pertaining to my case, uh, I've been in and out of county jail for, you know, petty theft, and, and uh, uh, what else, um, it's like violations, and whatever. I've been in and out of county jail, never did no more than uh, eight months, the longest I did was eight months. Uh, and, so 2014, fast forward to 2014, I'm, I'm 20 years old, well, my birthday is May 16th, and uh, so I just turned, May 16th, I turned 21, I'm, I'm living at a spot in Austin Heights, like a dope spot, my homies are there, and, uh, I haven't already, you know, I just, I got a gun for my birthday, my, my older homie gave me a gun for my birthday, and uh, so I'm, now I'm turned up, like, you know, I'm, I want to do something, I want to put in work, you know, I want to, I'm, I'm, I got from the gang, not, not, not so long before that, and, uh, I wanted to put some work in. I wanted to, like, you know, prove and build my name some more. And uh, so, from one day, I, two days after my 21st birthday, I, uh, I have a 40 Beretta with three clips, and one in the chamber, one in the, one in the gun, and two in my pocket. And that morning, I had a, I was at, the, I woke up at that, and I, I was living in a trailer at my, at some guy's house. Tweet, there's a tweeter spot. And uh, I got into him. One of the homies that put me on, he was arguing with his baby mama, and they were tripping and. I was just, we got a big-ass argument. He, he asked to see my gun. So I took the clip out, took the bullet out of the chamber, gave it to him. And he's like, this is my gun. <laughs> he's like, this is mine. And he goes, he, he goes, you're trying to get money behind my back, and you want to get things without, like, you know, you're doing shit behind my back and making money without me, and that's uh, my shit. Like, I was like, what? So it, it blew my mind, but he'd been tweaking and fighting. So I, I, go to, I was going to go get off and start swinging on him, and then he turned around and swung the gun at me, and it stopped. And it was just like, he, he smiled. He's like, I was just joking. And they gave him my gun back, and I just, it, my emotions were through the roof, because I'm like, what? I, I, he was trying to jack me, and then he was playing. And, like, you don't play like that. And, and so I just took the gun back, and I, I went, and I had a shotgun at the house, too, so I hit the shotgun shells, because I don't know what he was capable of. I don't know if he was going to kill his baby mom. I didn't know, so I hit the shells and left. And I took, I took a walk to see him to get this, like, you know, to get some air to calm down. So, so I walked to, walked to the other side of my hood and went to another spot I knew, and, I asked one of my homegirls, like, hey, can I borrow a bike? Like a bicycle. I didn't have a car anymore at the time. And my friend had a car, but I just, they asked me, he, he'd ask me, like, let's go put in work. I'll take you to go put in work, and you don't got to go by yourself. And, but I never wanted to put my friends in that position. I would feel like if I took him, and you know, we went and caught a murder or something, we went and caught one of my enemies and killed him, and he would tell on me, and I wouldn't want it because he has a baby. He's just having a baby. You know, it's just, I don't want to put him in that position. I didn't trust. I was, I have a very, I have real trust issues. And so I wanted to do mostly everything by myself. And, uh, that day I got on the bike and <clears throat> I went to Tacos Mexico, Hacienda Boulevard. I was there just thinking, trying to think what I was going to do. You know, I have a gun. You know, I'm, it's Sunday, like one in the afternoon. And I was sitting there like, man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Thinking, you know, I'm texting my girlfriend at the time, which was, she was at Maryland Duty School. And I wanted to talk to her. Maybe she'd call me down or give me my mom mic, but she wouldn't answer because she was at school. And it's not her fault, but I had no one else to call. So, you know, I just sat there and just festered in my mind, festered in my mind. And, you know, I was like, man, fuck it. Like, Got back on the bike and went over because my the way it is, Hacienda Boulevard separates the east and the west side. Like the east side is my hood and the west side is my enemy's hood. So I took a, took my bike over there and went and by you know cruising all the spots where I know I can catch somebody that's from the opposite gang and went down the street. 
went down the street, looked for it, but nobody was around, you know. Because, I mean, Hacienda Heights is not like Los Angeles or Stockton or, like, it's not a very gang-related area. It's a nice area, you know. It's very rare. You run into anybody, you know. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm on my bike looking, and by the time I'm about to, because it's like one way in, two ways out of, the, of this little residential area, of their main part of their, their hood, my enemy's hood. So, I'm going down the street, and I come back in up, and there's a house where... I have history at I know the family. I know I used to I used to know a girl that lived there and her family. I helped build the shed in the backyard. I helped uh I helped build this uh swing shed in the front for the kids, you know. So I know that house. But I know her family from my enemies hood. And and I just stopped the first time. I wasn't, you know, like I'm not gonna do that. I just you know, ignore that. Go down some look for somebody else. So when I'm coming back up it looked like they had, like, I wasn't going to party on or something, like, like a family gathering or something, because there was balloons, somebody's birthday, there was children in the front of the swing set that I helped build. And, you know, so I wasn't really paying attention. I'm not going to start stuff there with the kids there. You know, I'm not doing that. I don't do that. So I'm coming back down, down the street. There's a guy, bald-headed guy, standing out front of the, you know, drinking a beer. And, I, and off top, I mean, I, mean, I know, you know, if people are gangbang, you can tell someone that's a gang member or someone that, you know, is, you know somebody, it's somebody that wants problems or somebody that's potentially a... a, a you know, that, that wants problems or wants to hurt me or, you know, like my enemy or another gang member. So I'm on the bike and I'm cruising by. I have my, I have my gun in my pocket. I had some rock wear jeans on. I had a Boston B hat, white, t- uh, white or gray t-shirt, I can't remember. But so I'm, I have the clips in my, the other two clips fully loaded in my pocket. And I'm driving on my bicycle and I see him. And he's drinking a beer and staring at me, you know, mad dogging, I guess you can call it. I see him. I chunk up my hood. Like I just throw up the peace sign, which is, you know, it's kind of like my hood sign. You know, it's, the V, you make a V with your hands, which is my game. Uh, so I'd like, you know, he knows where I'm from. I'm not going to yell. I just throw it up. And he fuck He, what? Fuck. He throws up the P. And, fuck you. Like, get off your bike, bitch. Like, that's what he tells me. And I'm, and the whole time, right there in the yard, there's kids. There's children. I'm talking about just anywhere from one to five years old. There were a couple of children in our yard. And I laugh. I start laughing because I'm like, this guy doesn't understand. Like, you're yelling and wanting to fight me when I'm not, I'm not going to fight you right now. Like, I'm looking to urge somebody. You know, and unfortunately, that was my mindset. So I'm laughing at him. I'm just like, no, man, like, I'll come back later. Like, I don't want, like, no. He's like, get off the bike, bitch. Like, the fuck off the bike. And I'm I'm, not, and I'm slowing down. And, and the street, the main street's right there because the house is two houses from the main street. And I'm, just, I'm still laughing. I'm, like, swerving the bike because I'm like, no, because I don't, don't want him to get behind me. I'm just like, no, I'll come back, man. I'll come back. Your children are right there. I'll be back. And he's still talking shit. He's still talking shit. Whatever. All right, ignore him. So I'm about to hit the main street and leave when he yells across the street to somebody. Uh, I'm not going to mention his name, but uh, he yells across the street. Hey, get that motherfucker, and he tells us, homeboy. And I turn and look, and somebody's walking up on me. GW, all gang, banged out, like, you know, big pants. You know, he's, he's an older cat, though. I know this guy who it is. I've had history with him. And immediately I know he's, he's, well, he's approaching me. So, I mean, he's either going to take off on me or try to do whatever he is. So I hop off my bike. I pull the gun out. And by the time I pull the gun out, he's already, like, you know, he's right up on me, so, you know, I take a couple of shots at him, and I hit him, and I thought I killed him right away, because I was, you know, aiming for, I, I, I've been in the shooting range, I, I have a pretty good aim, and, uh, uh, you know, I thank God to this day I didn't kill him, you know, uh, but he dropped, and immediately I, I snapped out, like, everything was so fast, when I think about it, my journal was pumping, so everything was fast, well, it slowed down, like, everything went fast, it went from fast to slow, and as soon as the gun stopped firing and he fell, it went back to like regular, regular speed. And I'm like, oh shit, what the, what did I do? And I, oh fuck, what did I do? So I hop back on a bike and I go to take off, and the chain comes off the spindle. <laughs> I put the weight too much on it, it came off the spindle. So I'm like, oh shit, now I'm stuck. Now I'm kind of like afraid because I'm in their hood. I just shot one of their homies, and so I'm probably like, oh, they're gonna kill me. And so the guy's yelling the whole time. And the only reason I don't fire at him is because of the kids. I didn't want it to happen. And even though I shot that dude in the street. I didn't want, I don't do that. There's rules, but even just as a human, there's kills, there's kids there. So that's the only reason I didn't shoot at him. Because I don't want no bystanders, innocent bystanders. And, you know, and like, to this day, it's, it sickens me because I'm part of the gun, the fire, the gun, the gun, the gun violence statistic. I'm part of it. And it, it sickens me every day. I turn the, sh- I turn TV on and it's another shooting, another shooting, another killing. And it's, it sickens me because it's like, a, damn, like, what, are, what is America coming to? Like, you know, there's more guns to more people. I think, it's so easy to get a gun out there and, you know, and people are killing people and they don't know how to shoot and they don't know how to aim and they're killing this and people. I know there's gang members, gang on gang violence, and that's one thing, you know, like, that it's not right, it's illegal, it shouldn't be done, but, you know, like, if two gang members, it happens, you know, that's between them. But innocent people shouldn't, they shouldn't 
pay for, you know, our stupidity. And uh, so I take, I, take, I take off running. He starts chasing me, the dude, the first guy. He starts chasing me, yelling, you, you fucked up. There were kids right here. Because in, in our gang culture, it makes them all like the gang out. But... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Like Sue and fuck, and like the gang, the gang thing, the Mexican Mafia, I was part of the Mexican Mafia too, like a point, not up top, but when you're from a gang, you're part of it. And there's rules, you're not allowed, you know, in front of children or wives, and you, you, no innocence, you're not supposed to hurt innocent people or do things in front of children or wives or, or females, you're supposed to catch the guy by himself, you're not supposed to drive by, which I was on foot, so uh, I take off, and he's chasing me, and chasing me through the parking lot, 90 store, 99 cent store parking lot, and, uh, I'm waiting for him to shoot at me because I mean you're not chasing me without a gun, you know. Like why would you chase? I just shot your friend. Why are you chasing me without a gun? So I'm thinking he has a gun on him. So as I'm running, I change clips because I thought I I'd run out of uh, bullets. So I change clips. I'm running. I'm waiting for as soon as I hear a shot, I'm gonna just, we're gonna have a shootout. So I'm trying to go to a public place, and it, it was stupid. You have 60 seconds remaining. So I was running. He's chasing me. I'm, in, I'm my mindset was if I go to a public place, he's less likely to start shooting at me. And that was that was stupid because I'm putting innocent people in danger. Now that I think back, but in adrenaline, you're running and trying to save my like a survival instinct. You don't really think clearly. And so, but luckily he didn't start shooting, so I just kept running, I ran, 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 ran across house. I'm trying to get back to my hood, thinking that's going to be the safest place for me. So I make it back to Hacienda Boulevard. I, I lose I lose sight of him because I'm running for my life. I'm running, 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 running. I make it to my hood, hit the first street. I see one of uh, one of my not my friend, an older friend, like an older an older guy who who hangs who knows my homies and something. He can say, "I'm like, hey, help me!" The whole time I had the gun in my hand, I didn't notice. I run up, "Hey, help me, man! These guys are trying to kill me!" And his mother was right there. And she's, "No, no, no, no! I call the police!" And I seen her, and I was like, "Oh!" I put the gun away. I'm, I'm, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Miss. I apologize. I didn't, you know. So I just kept going. I'm kind of jogging down the street, going trying to make it to my homies, which is two streets, two streets down, and I'm almost out of breath. I'm running, running, and. You know, over the years, I can tell, I can hear, I know the sound of cop cars. And they're like, you know, hit the cop hitting the corner like a car, swerving the corner. That's what I hear. I hear a car really fast hit the corner. So I stop. The sirens isn't on, but I just hear the, Urgh! and I stop, and I start walking like nothing. I start walking, and uh, I, act like, I try to act like nothing. And he, I hear the cop get on the floor. He tell you he orders me to get on the floor. He says, Freeze, put your hands up. Don't move. Please, uh, don't stop. Don't stop running. I turn around, look at him, and he, he has a gun run on me, and I'm just, I have a gun on me too, and I'm just, turn back around, start running. I hit the first street instead of the second street, because now I'm not going to go to my friend's house, I'm not going to take the cops to his house, so I hit the first street, take a right, take the gun, and pull the gun, throw it, I throw it into the, into the yard. Uh, the cop didn't see me hit the corner, I hit across the street, I run into a, to this house, and, and the side fences are pretty high, and I, you can, I can scale fences, but these fences, I just was out of breath, and I didn't think I could make it, so I run straight to the front door, and he, uh, the cops already on me, drawn again. So, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. By that time, I'm out of breath, and I just, I just, I can't go anymore. I'm about to just pass out, so I just, I just pull the clips out of my pockets, pull everything out of my pockets, and throw it under the car, and I'll tell you something, after everything I've seen with the cops shooting people, and you know, uh, I thank God that he didn't kill me right there. And as soon as I reached my hands in my pockets, he could have blew me away. And uh, he's, he's an experienced sheriff that I've, you know, through trial. And, you know, uh, you know I, I even wrote him a letter years later, not not for no recognition, not for no nothing. I just I wrote him a letter, first letter like a detective. I mean, it wasn't a detective. I forgot his name. But uh, I, I, got, I had his name, and I looked at my case, and I wrote him a letter. And, I don't know if he ever got it, but I wrote him and I just told him, thank you, you know, this is me, I explained what, what happened, I'm why you pulled, you, you know, that you responded to that shooting that day, and I'm like, after all these people getting killed, you know, uh, you had every right, uh, you're responding to a shooting, you don't know what I'm doing, you know, I reached into my pockets, I pulled, he said, even, he told in the trial that he heard metallic things hit the ground, so he could have killed me, and I told him, thank you, you know, thank you for using your experience, and like, I don't, I don't hate law enforcement, I don't, I, I you know, everyone, we're all humans, we all have jobs, and, you know, I thank God that he didn't. You know, it wasn't jumpy or trigger happy, and you know he let me live, and he just, you know, he bit by the rules. And, but uh, I got arrested after that, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I went to trial, and I tried to come up with some stupid story, like I lied and said I was scared, and I went self defense, and I shot over my shoulder, and you know I was just an idiot. I just was trying to get out of it. You know, I didn't tell on nobody. That's one thing I just never could do. Tell, you know, I'm take my own. Every time I got busted, I 
I took the blame. I, it's, I did it. I did it. I'm not going to go telling somebody else to get out of my own shit. That was never. Like, you don't snitch, and I just didn't. You know, like I'm not perfect, but I just don't feel like bringing someone else down is is the right thing to do to get yourself out of it. You know, but so I just went and said I felt the fans. I just tried to like I was you know scared for my life, so I shot over my shoulder. Actually, they shot him, and you know that was it. But it didn't work. The jury, come on, the jury seen that. So I was found guilty and. I was sentenced to Mac. The judge, the judge knew it. He, he knew I was full of shit. He knew it. He, he seen me. And he, you know, he, he gave me the max on both of them, which I, I mean, I don't think I deserve, you know, that extensive sentence because I mean, I deserve some time. I deserve to do very serious time before what I did. I almost took someone's life. I hurt. I shot him in the neck, and you know, I, I, I deserve to do time and pay for my crime. I do, but I just don't feel the time limit matches the crime because, you know, I got nine years for second degree attempted murder. And then for a firearm enhancement, I got 25 years to life. And it's kind of like, you know, like I'm not trying to weasel my way out of it at all. You know, I, I believe I got to pay, you know, you do the crime, you got to pay, you got to pay the time. But I just think the judicial system is, uh, I don't know. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. I'm not, you know, crying or moaning about it. It is what it is. I've been down about 10 years. And, you know, when my day comes, my day comes. I'm trying to stay clean. I'm trying to stay out of trouble. And it's kind of hard, you know, because we're in prison. It's not college, it's not school, you know, but... There's no excuse, you know, I shouldn't, you know, I'm trying to go and I'm trying to, I needed that, I hate to say it, I look back, I'm the type to learn the hard way, and I needed, I needed a life sentence, I hate to say it, but I, I needed that, because any other, if I would have beat that case, I would have got out and thought I was invincible, and I would have probably wouldn't either got killed or killed somebody, and I think, that like, I believe everything happens for a reason, and I'm here for a reason, and now that I, like, it changed my mind, it, it shows me that, like, <laughs> If I ever get out, like I'm, that's my second chance at life. And if I ever mess up again, I'm probably never going to prison, never get out. So I, I hope, and I pray, and you know, I was raised Catholic, but over the years, like I know I believe in God, and I believe in different things, but I think everything happens for a reason, and I'm here, and I'm here for a reason, and I need to get out. And I just, you know, I was in Taekwondo. I used to teach kids, students. Once I was a black belt, I would teach, and I used to love that. I used to help kids. I would. I like to help people, and I want to get out because prison is going to be the biggest part of my life, and I want to get out and help somebody. If I can help somebody coming, somebody from picking up a gun and shooting somebody, or if I can help a kid at risk youth from not going to jail or not messing up his life like I did, I spent my whole 20s in prison. I can possibly spend the rest of my life in prison, but I truly believe that I'll, I'll get a, I'll get a second chance. Uh, but you know, that's you know, that's just being hopeful, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, I've been in prison. Uh, so I haven't really committed no serious violence. I've stayed away from picking up knives. Or, you know, I've gotten some fights here and there, and I've gotten some write-ups. And, and uh, you know, but I'm now I'm, I'm a little older now. I'm 31, and you know, I'm a lot more mature than I, you know, I was. And I just you know my I just want to get out one day, and I hope I hope I get that chance, and I hope my grandparents are still here. My grandma has dementia, and she's I don't think she's gonna make it much longer, but you know, I love her with all my heart. And, you know. If, I just hope to see her again, but if not, you know, I just hope she, you know, she goes to heaven and, you know, then my grandfather's at home by himself and he kills me because I'm supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be there for him and, you know, he's just by himself. And yeah, my family goes see him, but it's me. I'm his son. I should be there. I'm a grandson, but I'm his legal son. I should be there. And uh, he just kills me. I just, I want another Christmas with him. Like, I just, that was our thing. I, putting the Christmas lights up, putting the tree up, you know, like, I just, you know, I just want to, I hope I can, I told him, I was like, you know, there, there's, I mean, there's, there's guys celebrating their 100 year, their 100, their 100 uh, year anniversary, I mean, their 100 year birthdays, and I'm off, you're only like 88, 89, but, uh, you know, I hope we hold out another 10 years, please, you know, and he seems pretty healthy for his age, and, you know, we joke around, and, and he's, he's like, I'm going to try, yeah, I'm going to try, and I just, I just hope I can get that chance, but if not, you know, I just, I'm going to make him proud, I told him, I want to make him proud once again. I know I brought a lot of shame to it. I'm the only Kingsburg left. Uh, he didn't. He had three daughters, and I'm his son, so I carry his last name, and I want to keep his, his family legacy, the name going. And I love. I, I got a blasted on my back. I love my last name. I I love him, and I want to make him proud again of him, whether he's going to be here to see it or not. I just want to make him proud again, and I want to you know, get out and start this life, try to get on my feet. And I I, I hope I'll, like I I want to, I have plans when I get out, like what I want to do. And, I want to. I, I do want. I'm, in, I'm interested in joining the ARC. It's called the anti recidivism Coalition, and you know they uh, they're living proof. Like here on the yard, there's an inmate that used to be in this in this yard, the same yard. In this, my neighbor is the dude. This guy's Selly. 
he, and he went, got out, changed his life. He works for ARC, and now he comes back to the prison, and he runs the groups, self-help groups. Uh, he's an inmate, ex inmate. Now he's in here running our groups. He's like, man, look, I used to be in blues, now I got the keys. Like it just shows that it's possible, and that in America, like you, like, you know, especially California, they're willing, you know, Governor Newsom, Jerry Brown, and now uh, Gascon, you know, like they're they're the Gascon's a DA, and it's just it's like certain people are willing to. If we're willing to change, they're willing to help us, you know. And you know, not everybody feels the same way, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be another statistic of recidivism or. You know, another inmate that gets out, a chance to get out from a life sentence. And, and you know, because I see it all the time. You know, on news, the guy get out, oh, this guy, is, he's a fine felon. He got, they give him a chance to get out, and he wouldn't hurt somebody, kill somebody, or, you know, and, and just, it just, it just sickens me. Like, I just want to, I want to help. I want to somehow help with the gun violence statistics, and, and I don't want innocent people getting killed. I don't want nobody getting killed. Nobody deserves that. I just, I hope that one day I can help, and I can hopefully this story or, you know, hit, touch somebody or help somebody or in some way.